How do I introduce my next guest? A man with so many gifts. Do I start with his medical profession as a doctor in South Africa? Or do I cut straight to his illustrious career as one of the top rock and roll filmmaker photographers of our time? Or do I just begin by celebrating his mind, his eye, and ask how this passionate, compassionate soul navigates the world? They say how you do anything is how you do everything. But how do you choose when you excel at so many things? The first time I listened to him speak, I was moved. But the first time I saw his work, I recognized the shots, but I never knew his name. That's what I want to talk about today, to be in conversation with a creative mind and always looking for the next thing, even if it hasn't been invented yet. Ladies and gentlemen, Norman Seif. One of the keys and secrets to the creative process is that everything creatively emerges in the mind, in consciousness, in imagination. And the dilemma and the challenge and the excitement of being an artist is how do you take concept, which is creation in the mind, emerging out of imagination and bring it down into making it real. Now, what about the voice? Well, my voice is... Now that's different. I, I've always had my voice, like you've always had yours. If you can sing what's in your heart and keep time, that's it. Yes. Hello. Yes. And what you did, you put the arms of creativity around yourself. And then they gave myself a big hug. Yeah. And then... <laughs> and then... And then all hell broke loose. <laughs> <laughs> that's when it began. The intentionality it's not just, I want to be great and f fantastic, to what purpose, why? So if we get very clear about what we want to accomplish, we want to express ourselves, we want to connect with other people, we want to end the separation, we want to explore oneness, and we want to heal. And this is what creators are. They are healers of the future. And by the way, creativity is love's work, and it is also the way that you write your own story. Through creativity, you can literally decide one day, gee, I don't like the third act. Let me create a whole different third act. One of the things I was thinking about last night, which is, you know, you are a, an explorer of the creative process. If there was a moment that you recognize that creativity in all of its forms and all of its disciplines has a pattern to it. And was there a moment that that happened? Were you, in, were you seeking that from the very beginning? Well, it, it, it has stepping stones. And as I started doing hundreds of sessions, mm -hmm. I began to recognize a pattern. So the first thing was, okay, you know, I've got this idea, let's go, the initiation. And the second step in this pattern is, oh shit, because you get scared. And the scared is that you know that you want to go somewhere with that person that you've never gone before, that they've never gone before. I know the feeling of where I want to end up which is that sense of uh, oneness and connection yeah. and a sense of authenticity and intimacy, uh, which requires a vulnerability to get there. The power of change, which is a lot about what I'm focused on now. How can we create the templates for mm -hmm. people to use, the tools and techniques that they can actually change, mm -hmm. uh, which they use, we all use the word, oh, I just want to change, but it's the most scary thing you could possibly do. Absolutely. Because it's so safe to stay with the way you think things should be. Right. So change is very, very um, challenging to mm -hmm. people. And frightening. Uh, frightening. It's frightening. So the idea of creativity that is innovative is always about superseding what you know. And so the whole idea is to always be someone who's about to know, a little discussion we had yeah, the other day. That was great. Um, about not someone who knows, then you're fixed. Right. Um, Explain that more for us. Um, well, you know, when you come from the control systems of the current prevailing paradigm, it's a mental construct. It doesn't allow the fluidity of emotional uncertainty 
Mm -hmm. So what happens in that particular paradigm, don't act until you have all the answers. Right. But in the creative side that is innovative, that you want to do something that has uh, never been done before, means that you put something of yourself into what you do, and you're always open to discover the more of yourself. So rather than just the technicality of taking photographs, which I love to do, mm -hmm. but it wasn't it. What it really is, is what can I learn in this level of interaction with other human beings and discovering who they are and through who they are who I am. It is by actual practical living visceral experience I started discovering that my session went through a set of stepping stones that took me to the place where at a certain point I could push them beyond their boundaries uh, to go and, and be very, very daring about what we were going to do. If I started trying to push them from the get-go, they would walk out the door and they'd right. feel controlled. So right. I couldn't, it's a dance, right? Mm -hmm. So then as I'm starting to do this and I'm thinking, gee, you know, all these artists are coming in. They're in the midst of uh, an album or a book or a movie and they're in this heightened state of creative um, sort of um, ecstatic panic. <laughs> <laughs> and I started talking about their process, my process, and what I started discovering. They have a set of stepping stones that seem to do this. The first time I saw your work, I heard you speak, and I was sitting in the third row, and I think it was for Red Bull, and you had done this big presentation, and then it cut to your work. And I have, have never been moved to my core like I was that day. I was sobbing. <laughs> I was literally sobbing and people were looking at me like I just, like I was having a breakdown. It was so beautiful because you touch, you are able to demonstrate such humanity, such the beauty of vulnerability. And, the, and, and I think artists, when they work with you, it, it's, it's a moment for them when they are surprised and in shock that, that they reveal themselves in such a beautiful way, in such a pure way. You, you were able to do that. I wa watched you do that. Now, lucky for me that I've been able to watch you do that a few times with major artists and they walk away. And they're different and they're changed. Yeah. And that's a, that's a beautiful well, thing. Well, the interesting thing is it's so much easier to do it the way I'm doing it. So once I got to the point where I could say, because I felt now strong enough in myself to say, hey, I'm scared. What happens is right away the boundaries of separation go away mm -hmm. and then your boundaries get to be porous like that and that's what vulnerability is. Right. It means you're letting something in rather than I've got to do it perfectly and I've got to, you know, it's not about that at all. It's about how can I be um, real with you and then I know myself and then I'm confident. And so the, the, the photography started allowing me to go on an inner journey of seeing what do I need to do to be able to communicate with someone in a way that's authentic and real mm -hmm. and we can now break the separation which is what the pain is. So that's my healer coming in mm -hmm. and then realizing, wait, you can use creativity to break the separation and you're starting to deal with the, the pain of humanity which is the sense of isolation. Yeah. So is this medicine? And basically I'm saying to artists, yeah, you are healers of society and you're healing yourself in the process. And that's what it's going to take, I think, moving forward after this, after we get through this or in the course of getting through all of the, the change that we are going through. I think it's, it's, it's easier for people who are creative uh, to, to stay afloat right now and to have tools. Um, I think mean, people who don't have that, it's, it's scary. And that's why I think your work is so powerful. And the work you're about to do is, is really, for me, it's very inspiring. Because I think people need it. It's two-way street. By me being vulnerable with the artist mm -hmm. and them having the courage to meet me. And that's what the zone is. You jump beyond the, the, the separate boundaries. You allow your boundaries to be porous. You allow the vulnerability of emotional... Uh, 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 intimacy mm -hmm. to happen and then you get to be intimate with each other and you bond i bond with the artists in the sessions yeah i was just going to say that and and we can walk away uh, after three hours and we love each other because something happened 
that we felt safe with each other. I saw that when you reconnected with James Taylor, I think it was after 30 something years. Yeah, it was like <laughs> yesterday. <laughs> it was like you guys picked up right where you left off and I could see it in him and I could see it in you. He, and he, I thought, he wow. walked in on that session, he got so intimate, I almost had to say to everyone, shut the cameras off, he's, <laughs> he's really going. Yeah. Yeah, it was amazing. But yeah. Um, yeah. something happens when we are willing to let ourselves be seen and we're willing to have the courage to be uh, truly um, owning of what's going on with us emotionally. It is the emotion that is the power that's in the image. So what I realized, if I can create an emotionally real relationship with someone, mm -hmm. I don't need to make a picture. I'm just, Capturing. I'm just documenting the relationship. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't about photography, it was about the art of relationship. But it does begin with being willing to be um, transparent in a certain way. Don't you think it also comes down to people being willing to acknowledge their own emotions? Oh, absolutely. Right? Yeah. And, 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 I, and, and I think we're, we're fed so many different things about how we're supposed to be, how men are supposed to be, how women are supposed to be, and how we're supposed to be together, how we're supposed to feel about certain things that I... I just, I try to always encourage my kids, certainly, and myself to identify and acknowledge what you're feeling in a moment. I think it was Picasso says every act of creation is an act of destruction. destruction right? uh, you clear the way for something new. Mm -hmm. So through the session, I ended up saying, well, the, this is a, the way of creativity may be a path to the evolution of personal consciousness mm -hmm. and collective consciousness. Mm -hmm. And at the core of the creative process, what artists are trying to do is to connect to others through telling their story. So you can tell a story of like how the world fucked me over or that I'm now looking to supersede moment by moment because I have the courage to jump into the uncertainty and to the unknown. And the certainty I have is that I know that the process mm -hmm. is what I trust, knowing if I was um, in my emotional authenticity mm -hmm. and I created an environment of safety and trust and the artist would go there with me, then we're both in our authenticity. I don't have to do anything in the sense of trying to make something, uh, uh, in, in, in terms of trying to have an outcome. The outcome is the relationship and the intimacy. What do you do when you encounter somebody who uh, just completely resists you? I realize that it's up to me to be more transparent and more vulnerable mm -hmm. so that unconsciously and subconsciously they can go, oh, I can trust this person and I don't need to resist and protect myself. Because that's what the resistance is, is the fear yeah. of if I let myself be seen, I'll be judged. I'll be judged. I'll, you know, all of the things that people are frightened about being vulnerable, mm -hmm. vulnerably themselves. But if you're not yourself, then you don't know who you are. You don't. You, a lot of people don't even know that they exist. Well, like that's I guess they what don't I feel. was trying to say is that you know it's like we're we're accustomed to feeling our feelings, but how do you how do you teach or lead people? to the way of recognizing their own emotions. I think, in a way, I think that that's what's happening well, right you now. you can't. I can't teach someone to feel. I can go there and show my vulnerability, and then they make the decision internally, okay, now it's safe for me to do that. Which is, I think, what we're, why, why I'm speaking to you and why your work is profound. Because you're, you're allowing, you're, you're giving the artist permission to feel, and then I think when people see, oh my gosh, I can do that too. Yeah. You know? Well, they're giving me permission to feel so. Right. But the whole point is that I create an environment in which it's safe to be as real as we're willing to be in that moment. Mm -hmm. And so what I do, it's not like it's my work. This is a, 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 collabor a collaborative relationship. So every session to me is a relationship. Mm -hmm. And so what started happening is I started getting more and more fascinated with the relationship and being so in love with people because when you get right. beyond the defenses and the fears and you discover and it sounds like a cliche but this is so real the goodness truth and beauty of who people are and so in a certain sense what i started looking at is what do we discover when we start to work with people at the higher reaches of human potential because that's the more of us and, and what I'm do you not, mean by that well as i'm sort of going through the stepping stones of my own evolutionary process i get visceral perceptions after the fact oh 
that's what I'm doing. I didn't have this languaging that I'm telling you now. I, I did it from the get-go. Somehow, unconsciously, I was looking for the beauty in people coming out of a, a, a country a where very violent. all I saw was the ugliness, or that's what I thought. I thought that was the world, and I was in rage. Right. But rage is actually a state of feeling disempowered. So there can be silent rage or cold rage. Women, as a, as a gender, are in rage because there's a certain degree of the chauvinist society tries to keep them disempowered. So the power and the passion to create. The passion part of it is the passion to tell your story. That's the passion. The power is everyone's in rage. So how do you empower yourself? And so the, By recognizing it first. Well, rec recognizing, recognizing that owning, we are. owning that I am disempowering. I'm disempowering myself. I'm not being real. I'm not in my true emotions because I'm frightened to show the vulnerability. So for me, the stepping stone to move to where I went took me five to seven years to go through that stage of fear. Mm -hmm. And once I went through that stage where you disengage what stops you, and on the other hand, engage the power and strength. The, who are we when we are functioning at the higher reaches of human potential? We have innate powers and strengths that are built into human consciousness. That is what we are. It's not like we have to, we have to go out and build it. It's there. Mm -hmm. And that's where people forget. They forget that they're creative because they forget that, that every emotion, even fear and rage, are powers. Yes. The power indeed. to feel rage can go... To the positive side, the outrage about what you're seeing. The enrage is when you go, you know, I'm turning it on myself and I'm right. punishing myself. When you were talking about being disempowered, I, I think I had read, read something, I read a book uh, Marion Williamson wrote, and I think it was, it was a book about women, I think it was like a woman's something, a woman's story, and it, it touched me so profoundly because she identified in the book that most women, women in general, have been disempowered for so long and we all feel it and when I read that it, it changed it changed me because I was really able to go oh because even even though you I was born in this country and I was born in New York City and I was born empowered and had all the opportunities available to me there was a part of me that just quietly couldn't couldn't feel the power I always try to communicate that, that, to recognize that there's a part of us that has just been shoved down so far. It's almost not there, but there's a whisper of it, you know? Yeah, I, I've really focused on that balance of the masculine feminine energy. Um, the yes, feminine energy is the, the, the core qualities are imagination is a feminine energy. Emotion is a feminine energy. And if emotions are suppressed, uh, then you are disempowered. Now, men have also been had their emotions. The feminine side of men has been equally Horrible. invisibilized. Absolutely. Okay. Imagination, if you're sitting in the back of the room, and I had this lovely conversation recently with Seal, you know, and he's this incredible, you know, yeah, hunk of a man, I mean, yeah. gorgeous to look at. And yeah. he said, I was the guy who sat at the back of the class uh, caught in my imagination dreaming. You can't create unless you can imagine something. And then you have to feel it for it to have any substance. There's so yes. much energy here. So yes. when I started talking to artists about their fear, uh, Shaka Khan said, I've turned my fear into the absolute asset that I use to kind of, you know, it's a source of energy for me. And, and across the board, so then I realized that fear was definitely that second step mm -hmm. uh, for artists to go, I get an idea and I'm excited and I'm passionate about it and then I'm scared, what if it's stupid and it's horrible and it's a bunch of crap? You know that story that yeah. artists tell, you know, yeah. and you go through phases, oh, it's incredible, oh, no, it's horrible. Right. But the fear is what stops people uh, from actually moving forward with daring and courage to... Uh, tell their story uh, of their true destiny. The destiny is, you know, what if I go there? I, I have this thing I love, the passion, mm -hmm. but I'm scared that I'll embarrass myself and I'm not good enough and I'll be humiliated. So that was the sort of patterning that I started to see, and it was so 
earthy. Mm-hmm. You know, and then you get to the point where once you've hit those emotions, you now have to learn how to take those emotions and transform them from blockages and, you know, bars of the prison and empower them to be your escape. If you can define the bars of your prison, you can plot your escape. So the third step is to go in there and own the bars of the prison. And then you have to decide to absolutely, with discipline, in the same way that artists work with discipline, Mm -hmm. in a disciplined way to go in and piece by piece define your bars and take them out. So the escape gets you to a place where you now feel, hey, I feel that I'm willing to act with courage. And the interesting thing about courage is willing to go there even though you don't have all the answers. Mm -hmm. In some of the chauvinistic world, you never go there unless you have the answers. Right. It's which, lacking Which is courage. what stops, stops yeah. most people. Stops most people. Yeah. While you were talking, it was making me think about mm, the first time I did stand-up. It was the most terrifying experience. I just, when I heard my name called, I thought, I couldn't tell you anything about who my name, what my name was, who I was. It was absolutely terrifying. You and went there I, anyway, in spite of the fear. Yes. Courageous. Uh, yes, I did. I don't yeah. know why. I can't even tell you why, what made me do that. But I, I felt like somewhere inside I had to do well, it. Well, there's, there's a deeper part of you, the soul self, that wants to supersede. It's driven. It's the passion of that aspect is how do I become more? We all have that. Yes. And, and it gets, we either give it away or it gets taken away by society that says you've got to have it all together right. in order to have the courage to go there to uh, exercise one's innate ability to use, this is a very long sentence, <laughs> <laughs> to use those inner resources that everyone has. Every emotion is an inner resource and a power. And information. Even if they call negative emotions, yeah. they're powerful. You know, um, anger can be used to a negative way and turned into hostility. But anger is that one emotion that you can let go instantaneously by honestly expressing that out. If your boundaries are attacked, you can say, hey, wait a minute, you're crossing a line here, and that pisses me off. Right. Over. Hurt is a different thing. Hurt, right. takes, it, hurt is a wound that takes a long time to heal. Yeah. So there's all these like emotions that when you begin to identify the bar of emotion, creativity alone is not enough to get to the place of the level that I'm seeing we can go, which is a a complete shift in the nature of human consciousness to a different uh, evolutionary level, a different set. So... But what is that? So uh, what I realize, whatever we do, we have to do the inner journey. Mm -hmm. You can't just do the outer journey. And for a lot of people, you say the inner journey, and they're saying, what do you mean? What do you mean by inner? They don't know that they have an inner. We went to school and we learned all the facts. Just give me the facts. Right. And so the the men as well as the women were damaged by chauvinism. Chauvinism means you elevate the masculine and you suppress the the value of the feminine. Mm -hmm. But you can't create unless you have your feminine empowered. And then the boys just get in there too. Okay, boys, go. <laughs> go roll the ball. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, uh, do what I say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Implement it. But, so it's fun. I'm being funny here. But the, unless you have that balance, masculine and feminine, yeah. and you have your imagination and your emotionality empowered, now you can use your will and your action, which is the two masculine energies, to implement it. So if you're scared, you don't have will. You know, your willingness is like, I have these these resources, I have the assets, but I'm unwilling to use them. Right. Because what if I use them and I look like a fool? So mm-hmm. what we had to do is we had to compete and beat. And if and I dominate. beat someone, yeah, then I'm dominate, and then I'm dominant. That's the domination. And mm-hmm. the domination model is now out there. You can see it playing out every day. It's the ego, you know, whacking off, frankly. Right. And we need to go beyond the ego consciousness and go on that inner journey to discover that we do have an inner self. There is a subconscious that knows a lot of shit. And we do have an unconscious that knows it all. Mm -hmm. And we do have a higher self that is even more. And that 
that knowledge and that that's key knowledge that's 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 the love the love has this it's, it's love is not just the physicality it's this intelligence that is a sort of supreme sacred intelligence that by going inward you can contact and then begin to realize hey i'm not the pinnacle of you know everything that's what the ego thinks so unfortunately the society, the whole chauvinistic model was based on the ego being the, you know, it's a win or lose model. Right. Uh, it's a hierarchical control or be controlled model. Yes. And now it's collapsing. And the women are like suddenly rising up like the phoenix. And I, want, I want to actually circle back for a second um, to the idea of also reframing, reframing fear. Because when I started to make friends with the fear that and the terror that would hit me quite frankly it hits me every time i do stand up you know right before it's just like this real intense like like it's like the first time i'm doing it for the first time every single time but i reframe that now i recognize that fear is is informing me exactly right it's a guidance system it's a guidance and it also is the adrenaline i realize in my body it's the adrenaline is actually getting me ready to do what I do. So this is the conversation I have with artists all the time. Every emotion has uh, a, a... Counterpoint? Uh, yeah, it, 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 along a, a spectrum it's got a constricting face and an expanding face. Mm -hmm. So fear, when it's overwhelming, paralyzes you. Right. But fear is there that says, go this way because that's the unknown. That's what makes you scared. If you're not scared, then you're not going into the unknown. I'm now being able to say to artists, if you're not scared, you're probably repeating the past. So your fear is telling you, go right there where you think you're, you, you don't want to go. But that's where you'll find the, the something juice. new that you don't know. Absolutely. Right. Ooh, so that's that. the reframing of fear. And totally. that took me years and a lot of vodka <laughs> <laughs> to handle. You know. Yeah. Now I can do it without it. This is, I think, the, one of the reasons you and I connect so deeply. It's like, you know constantly trying to go deeper and 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 I, I don't know I just I just love I just love people and I think I think humanity is is so beautiful and they, so oh, and they've so forgotten beautiful. that that's what the pain is it's yeah. separation from self and we've been taught we've been yeah. beaten down and constricted well, and told who we are I mean I'm not like whatever but I'm just saying that if we allow ourselves to to not know and getting a better, a more stronger connection with ourselves than Every that. one of these little pieces are the constituent stepping stones to that place of being whole. And when I'm in touch with them, if I know I'm angry, then when I'm taught, if I'm pissed at you and I'm pretending I'm not, I'm not real, I'm not even present. I need to know that I'm angry. Yeah. And if I'm talking to you in a measured way, I'm choosing to put that anger on the shelf until later. <laughs> but it's felt. And I will it's deal felt with in the it. room, isn't it's it? What? It's, it's what? felt in the room. It's felt in the room. You can't hide. You know, you can't, you can't hide that. You can't hide what yeah. you're feeling. And people think it's their words, but, you know, there's so much swirling around and people can pick up on things. I don't want to sound, you know, lofty and grandiose, but I, I, I'm really happy when I'm connecting with people. This it makes me very happy. Just that everyone recognizes that this is like such a beautiful journey. Yeah, and it and comes so out much... of your love and it comes out of your yeah. caring and yeah. it comes out of your authenticity. I want people to see that in themselves, you know. And that's what's beautiful. See, it's loving beyond self. And that's one of the most beautiful things I found out. The Boundary Bella artists that I worked with would say, unless I'm of service to in some way go beyond the separation. I would do something else. Yeah. And it's so amazing that, you know, when I worked with Ray Charles and he was like, the, uh, the story I tell, like he came and he really didn't want to do the session. He was really testy with me and a bit pissy and, and, and I thought, uh oh, <laughs> then a problem. We ended up with him calling me brother. But yeah. at a certain point he was just playing to me and he was describing how the emotion animates what goes into the music. He's not looking to get the love. He's wanting to give the love. But I do feel I've come to a place where I'm, I'm functioning beyond self-interest in the work that I want to do. And so if you ask me, what do you want? I do want to be of service. 
And I do want to be here at the time that human evolution goes through the stage where the old world collapses and freaks everyone out. But out of that chaos is the potential to go into the unknown and then discover and bring something in. And, and I just did a shoot with Leanne Rhymes, and she just used that, that lovely statement, creating something out of nothing. And the true artists always know that we're creating something out of nothing. It wasn't there until I was the authority. I didn't ask anyone for permission to do this. I decided this is my decision and my choice. That's the courage to create, and it's in everybody. That's the biggest secret. It's all about what do I love in an unconditional way. And at a certain point, that's the beauty. You ask the question, well, you know, what is the goodness, truth, and beauty in people? The truth is we have an incredible fierceness of love that we've suppressed because it's like, I'll get hurt or, you know, I'll be rejected. Mm -hmm. The point is it's innate. It's one of the strengths in, in human beings. And when you discover that these are innate, then you actually discover the real self. The truer self is the one that wants to connect, that wants to supersede, that wants to give, uh, that is willing to be courageous enough and step into the unknown, knowing the certainty is that I'm now in alignment with my true work, which is my passion. And so my creativity is about telling my story uh, in alignment with my true destiny. When I'm working with artists, they have a passion to tell the story not out of a narcissism only, there's a lot of them that are narcissistic about sure. it, but the real ones have gone beyond the narcissism and are creating out of the love, not for the love. That's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Love you. And I love you so deeply. It's a higher love. Yeah. Thank you guys for joining. The larger purpose of how do I bring out the goodness, truth, and beauty in people. There was something deep inside of me that was saying you needed to challenge yourself to be the artist, which means infusing your ability with the heart. What can I say? So, You can do it. <laughs> you wouldn't want to hear. To, oh yes, sir. You wouldn't want to hear my notes. But but you see what you do is that through your art you absolutely, if it comes through your heart the way it does, it resonates in other people in the same place. You are the best. Oh, we have more fun with you than anybody. I think we have it. Don't you think so? You're a bad boy, man. I am. I hope so. Hey. Mm. Thank you for Thank a you, lovely baby. experience, my darling. Thank you, this was awesome. I think we got the session. Yes. Okay, man. Hey! Hey! I'll yeah. give us some <laughs> We got it. We got it. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, thank you, Ron. <laughs> oh, we always have a great yeah. time. <laughs> Ray, thank you so much. Oh, come on, it's man. such a pleasure. Thank you. Well, see what I like. You did yeah. just what I like. Is yeah. get in there and let's do it. Yes. Right. Yes. No time, man. Because I come to work when I play. I play. Yes. But when I work, I work. Yes. I like that. You, you, you got my heart. Yes. Thank you.